forgot to record this morning. So, we are looking, ladies and gentlemen, at power. <coughs> now, the problem is power is also a word, Hisham, that's used in English quite a bit. In fact, what happened on Tuesday? We often use the word power interchangeably with electricity. It is not interchangeable with electricity. The word power is used in a variety of ways, but in physics, power is the rate at which work is done. It's how fast you're doing work. Or the rate at which energy is transformed. That's what power is. And it's a scalar. It has an equation. You'll get this equation on your formula sheet. Power is defined as work over time. Where work could be force times distance. Where work could be the area under a force versus distance growing. Or where work could be change in potential plus change in kinetic work. The units, well, it's technically a joule per second because work is joules and time is seconds. But we've given that a special name. Does anybody know what we measure power in? What? 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 I'm never going to get tired of that. Sorry. Three more days of that, boys and girls. Yeah, we call this a watt. Yeah. It's the bad jokes that are the best jokes. Named after a scientist, his last name was? What? Okay. A 60 kilogram girl runs up a flight of stairs 3.32 meters high in 2.6 seconds. A, what's her power output in watts? Okay. Power is work over time. Spencer, how much time? I agree. Work is what times what? Well, it's force times distance. It's uh, the area under a force distance graph. It's change in potential plus change in kinetic. I think, Nav, though, we can simplify that a little bit. I think here when we're talking about which force are you resisting when you go upstairs? Gravity. I think this is actually going to be MGH. She's gaining potential energy. Where's that energy coming from? Her muscles, the food that she ate. This is going to be 60 times 9.8 times 3.32 divided by 2.6. 75 point one. Point one. What? Let's talk about what this means. 751. Sorry, that makes more sense to me. I was going, that seems awfully low to me. 751 watts. Never trust Spencer again. Chris, let's talk about what this means. Um, supposing somebody heavier, tried, like an overweight person, tried to do the stairs. Will they find it easier or tougher? Because it requires more power. Or let's suppose uh, you were running the stairs, but Justin, you wanted to run it faster. If you ran stairs faster, would you be more tired or less tired at the top if you ran them faster? And if this number was smaller, what would happen to the overall answer, bigger or smaller? I don't know if you remember, when we talked about work, I went on a big rant because I said, people think that work is how tired you are. Actually, power is tiredness. If you're generating more power, you're getting tired faster. Rob, this is why little six and seven-year-old kids have so much energy on playgrounds. Their mass is so small. Most of you by now, because most of you have hit your growth spurt, weigh two, three, or four times as much as a six-year-old. And it means that if you're trying to keep up with your little nieces or nephews or cousins or brothers or sisters, you're having to generate three or four times as much power. You're getting three or four times more tired. It's not that they're in better shape. 
It's that you're having to generate way more power to match the amount of power they require. That's why those seven-year-olds can go up and down that playground nonstop for four hours. It's easier for them, okay? They're not having to burn as much joules per second. In fact, a 60-watt light bulb, which is your standard light bulb, burns 60 joules every second. 120 joules in two seconds. You can figure out how much you burn, in, how much energy in a minute, how much energy in an hour. Power, nice one-to-one -one ratio. Now, the person who, who the unit is named after, James Watt, was a British inventor. He didn't invent the steam engine, but about 200 plus years ago, he dramatically improved it. He made it safer and way more efficient. And so Nav, he was trying to sell the steam engine in particular, he was trying to sell it to farmers. He figured that he had a product that could really make their lives easier. The problem is, none of them knew what a steam engine could use for, and so he made a brilliant advertising move. Instead of measuring it in joules per second, he created a unit of power. He called it the horsepower. He said, this engine is five horsepower, and what he was telling the farmers is, this will do the work of how many horses? That was a nice, easy measurement for them to use and a budget and figure out whether they could afford it or not. Brilliant. In fact, so brilliant that the horsepower is still in use, even though none of you know how much work a horse can do in one day. Right? I'm sure 150 years ago, every farmer knew how much work a horse could do in one day. Oh, a five horsepower motor, that'll replace five of my horses. I can get the hay bale that much faster. Excellent. Now, but we still use it. Where do we use horsepower? Yep. One horsepower is about 750 watts. So this girl is generating approximately one horsepower. What's an average car motor? Does anybody own a car and know the horsepower of their motor? If you have a four-cylinder, especially like a little Japanese car or whatever, or an import, probably about 120. So if you want to know how many joules per second, on your calculator right now, go 120 times 750 to go from horsepower to watts. Okay? Now, that's the maximum theoretical output of your motor. You're never getting that much into turning the tires, though, because engines are not 100% efficient. Can you hear a car from a long ways away? Uh, sound, boys and girls. Uh, when you touch an engine with your hand, what do you feel? Lots of heat. They're, in fact, internal combustion engines terribly inefficient. Much more efficient electric motors. You guys are probably the generation, probably sometime in your lifetime, CNN or somebody is going to do a story, today marks the first time that more electric cars were sold in North America than internal combustion engine cars. And then a few years after that, today marks the first time that there are more electric cars insured on the road than internal combustion cars. Probably in your lifetime unless they come up with an even better, more efficient way to move stuff around. Come on, Duduk. Next one. Come on, Mr. Duck. How long would it take a five horsepower motor to lift a 500 kilogram safe up to a window 30 meters above the ground? It can only do this so fast. There's only so much power to go around. Well, the first thing I should do, Andrew, I think, is the power here is 5 horsepower. We need to convert that. What do we need to convert it to? What? What? Okay, I'll never get tired of that joke. Sorry. So we're going to go times 750 watts is the same as 1 horsepower. How many watts of power does this particular motor, in theory, give us? 5 times 750, uh, 3750? Yeah. yeah. Brandon, what's this question asked me to find? Call me silly. Power equals work over time. Right, Shannon? Justin, how would I get the T by itself? Yeah, in fact, stuff moves diagonally. I think we can say the time is going to be the work required divided by the power, and the power is going to be 3,750. How much work do we need to do? Well, what force are we 
going against according to this question. If we're lifting a safe up. Grab, you know what? I think the work is going to be technically giving the safe some potential energy. Uh, mass G H What's the fastest possible that we can get this safe up to the window? And it doesn't matter how hard you press the throttle or how much you floor the engine. This is as fast as it can go. Zay, what'd you get? Oh, never mind. Sorry. Hisham, what'd you get? Oh, it didn't. Oh, you did? 39.2? Even if you want to go faster, you're stuck. The only way you could go faster is you get a higher horsepower or a higher wattage motor, a more powerful motor. Okay. So we said earlier that power, Robbie, is how tired you get. All right? This is why ramps work so well. How many of you ever helped somebody move their house and move furniture? How many of you ever lift furniture into the back of a vehicle? Okay. It's much nicer if someone rents a truck that has a ramp. I mean, no matter what, you're still raising that furniture the same amount of height. You're still giving it the same amount of potential energy. But a ramp lets you take a longer time, which means smaller power required. You're not as fatigued. Lifting it straight up means we're doing it all alone. And that's why you get tired lifting things straight up. Ramps are not energy savers. They're power savers. They don't make us as tired. That's why stairways, if they're shallower, even though they take longer to walk, it's because they take longer to walk. The backfield stairwell is a classic example. It's a nice shallow stairwell. You can't do it really, really fast. But you're really not that tired when you get to the top of it. Where if they'd done that as a normal stairwell where the stairwells are about a foot long, you'd be huffing and puffing by the time you get to the top of it most of the time. Okay. Yo, hustle back, please. By the way, there's another way to think of power. Power is work over time, and Cassidy, work is what times what? So that's what I wrote right here. What I'd like all of you to do is actually carefully circle the D and the T like that, just to make them stand out. Courtney, what's distance measured in? What's time measured in? I think what I've just circled is meters over seconds or meters per second or what's measured in meters per second? Hisham. As it turns out, this is also I'm not gonna give you that. That doesn't show up on the formula sheet. Rob, it's implied. Well, if work over time is force times distance over time, it's force times distance over time. Just emphasizing that. Every once in a while, you'll get a question, and it starts either tells you how much power, and it asks you to find a velocity or a force, or it, you'll notice it doesn't give you a distance or a time, which defeats much of the force times distance over time. I bet you there's a velocity in it somewhere. So a second definition of power, force times average velocity. And we'll be coming up to one where that becomes important in a bit. I've used the word efficiency a few times today. I've said that internal combustion engines, gas motors, are very inefficient. They are. So let's look at how we calculate efficiency. Efficiency means how much bang do you get for your buck. Or in other words, how much useful work is done as a fraction of the total work done. How much energy do you get out compared to the amount of energy you put in? It's usually expressed as a percentage. Now, I actually didn't know this the first few years I was teaching Physics 12. When I was teaching Physics 12, I was always taught that the abbreviation for efficiency was EFF for efficiency. And then I learned that there is actually a letter. It's the Greek letter eta, which looks like a lowercase n with one longer leg. 
You can use that in my notes, in my answer keys. I think most of the time I just wrote EFF for efficiency, but if you want to you know, nerd out, go ahead and use the eta symbol. It's usually used to represent efficiency. Efficiency is defined as how much work you get out divided by how much work you put in. Times 100% to make it a percentage. W out divided by W in. Oh, I know what I can do. W out divided by W in. Tyson looks at that. Oh, it says, what would over win? Ha, huh? no. Or power out divided by power in. Or energy out divided by energy in. Or, well, I'll write those three for now. Brendan, I don't actually remember any of those. What I do is, if they ever ask me for the efficiency of something, I remember the universe that I live in. And in our universe, we can never be 100% efficient. We're always losing some energy. If you're doing an efficiency question, and you're telling me that your answer is more than 100% efficient, if you're right, you're winning the Nobel Prize. In fact, if you invented something, Nav, that was more than 100% efficient, we would name a unit after you, the JASL. It would be there. And you know, when we talk about scientists, we would talk about Newton and Einstein and JASL. In fact, you know what? If you did actually invent a machine that gave us more energy than we put in, we would actually talk about JASL and then Newton and then Einstein because you would have invented a perpetual motion machine. You would have solved the energy crisis. And if we solve the energy crisis with a bit of ingenuity, we can translate that to any other crisis. You want to grow unlimited food? If you get unlimited energy, I'm pretty sure we could find a way to grow lots and lots of unlimited food. Trust me. We, 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 but sadly, Nav, that's not the universe that we live in. Now, if you do invent a machine that's more 100% efficient, when you win your Nobel Prize, please mention my name. <laughs> I'd like to thank my physics teacher for telling me that this couldn't be done. Hey, do it! In your face! I'll, I'll even live with that, okay? That'd be good. By the way, the reason I'm saying that is because you'll notice in the equation I gave you, Alex, I used out over in, out over in, out over in. There is one question. I know which one is coming down in the future, where just the way it's worded, the word out appears in front of the thing that's the in, and the word in appears in front of the thing that's the out. And you're going to be so tempted to tell me that this machine is 180% efficient. And I'll write next to that. No Nobel Prize for you. So you know what I remember? I really remember this. Smaller number over bigger number. Because that's my universe. A typical household light bulb transformed energy at a rate of 60 watts. However, most of the electrical energy, unfortunately, is transformed into heat instead of light. In fact, in a 60 watt bulb, about 57 watts go to heat and only about 3 watts go to light. An incandescent bulb is only about 5% efficient. Now that has led to some bad science. I'm even putting this on the internet record right now. I believe in January, our government is telling us they're going to phase out incandescent bulbs. I think that's coming in January. All you're going to be able to buy in stores are those screw-in fluorescent ones because somebody who has a bad physics background working for the government said, oh, if I can make the bulbs more efficient, that'll save us energy. And here's the problem. Are most light bulbs outside or inside? Think about it. Inside. So when you turn a light bulb on inside, is it giving off heat? Yes. But that heat is being captured by your house. In fact, your household heating bill goes down by exactly the same amount of heat that that bulb gives off. There's no energy loss or energy savings. 
it's more energy going to the bulb, but it's less energy in most of your electric heaters, more, less energy going to your heating bill. Swapping the bulbs isn't going to help at all. Now, it will help for outdoor bulbs. Do we yet have very many incandescent outdoor bulbs? First of all, road bulbs, what are those? Are those incandescent? No, those are all fluorescent ones, right? We have very few incandescent outdoor bulbs. Those ones, I do agree, when you flick those ones on, you're losing a lot of energy into heating up the planet. But that's not very many of them. Now, someone who understands a little bit of science but still has a bad physics background might counter my argument, and now they might say, Mr. Duick, what about in the summer? In the summer, when you turn a light on, that's heating up your house. And I know in the summer, you don't want to heat up your house. Now you're spending energy to cool your house. Surely, you're not saving or breaking even then. We live in the Northern Hemisphere. In the summer, are our nights longer or shorter? Way shorter. Do we use bulbs anywhere near as much in the summer compared to what we do in the winter? I'm not so sure for a Northern Hemisphere country that this is going to help us at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're going to end up losing a lot of money because the fluorescent bulbs are more expensive to make and they cost more energy to make and they all contain mercury, which means they're a pain to dispose of. LEDs, but I bet you those are five years away because right now they're 50 bucks a bulb. Jessica, I'm a science person. There is no way I'm spending 50 bucks on a bulb. In fact, you know what I'm going to be doing this weekend? I'm going to be going to London Drugs and buying about 60 light bulbs. I'm going to clean out the stock. And I'm going to see if I can last for about a year. Because I, the incandescent ones, I'm not a big fan of. Okay. Hey, when you guys vote, get it changed. Or I agree with Jessica. Once the price comes down, LEDs are the future because they require almost no energy and they don't get very warm. I agree. That would save energy, I believe. But replacing incandescents with fluorescents if they're indoors, you're breaking even right now. You're heating up your house with them. In fact, I was going to say girls, but maybe boys. We are in the new millennium. Girls and some boys, you may have owned a toy that baked with a light bulb. Some of you are not, oh, yeah, the easy bake up. Yeah, see. But again, you were breaking even. You were getting work out of that extra heat. Sorry. There's my end of rant. Example three. A 250 kilogram mass is lifted at a constant speed of 2 meters per second for a distance of 12.5 meters. A. Find the work done. Okay. Um, we're lifting. Work equals force times distance. Did they give me a distance? Yeah. OK, I think we can use Which force when we're lifting something? In fact, Ashley, I'm going to argue that this is really just the change in potential energy, MGH. How much work was done? 250 times 9.8 times 12.5. What'd you get? Give me the whole answer because I'm going to use this for part B and C. Then I'll do my sig, sig figs. 30625? And since they also want this answer, I'll go 3.06 times 10 to the fourth Carson units. Joules with authority. Work. Joules. Spencer, what's part B want me to find? Power is work over time, which is force times distance over time. Oh, wait a minute. We figured out how much work, didn't we? How much? Divided by how much time? <gasps> they didn't tell me. 
Betcha that means, Carissa, I can probably figure it out. Let's see what else they told me. Now, I know the distance that we lifted it for was 12.5 meters. Yes? I know that my initial velocity is 2. Oh, wait a minute. In fact, Spencer, what did I just underline? What's that tell us? <gasps> I think that tells us this. D equals VIT, but no plus a half AT squared, because A is 0. Yes, Simran? How would I get the... You said we wanted to find time. Yeah. How do I get the T by itself, Simran? Twelve point five over two. You know what? I think I can divide by two in my head. I'm pretty sure twelve point five divided by two is going to be six point two five. A two times table, even I can do. Tyson, I think I'm going to put that six point two five here. How many watts of power is this motor putting out? Units? What? What? By the way, hopefully that's also a stupid dumb way for you to remember the units. Right? I mean, you know, whatever works, right? Brendan, what's C want us to find? Find what? Okay, now here's what we said. Efficiency is how much you get out divided by how much you get in. But I really said it's always going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. What number did they give us in C? 10 kilo, uh, kilo is uh, what? 10,000 watts. Okay. You know what? The efficiency, which is that lovely Greek letter right there, is going to be we got 4,900 watts of power out. But the motor claims to put out 10,000 watts of energy of power. I think you get 0.49 or 49% efficient. Where'd the other 51% of the power of the energy go? Sound, heat, mostly those two. Basic one is the hotter a motor runs, the less efficient it is. Later on this year, you'll find that one of the reasons we like electric motors is the faster they run, the colder they run. In other words, electric motors are at their most efficient when you're flooring them. Are car motors at their most efficient when you're flooring them? No. Yo. What's the most efficient like type of motor? I don't know. That's a great question. I will ponder. Or Google it. But I will ponder. Because even, even among electric motors, there's various designs, and they're still tweaking those all the time as well. The latest one, they're talking instead of having one electric motor, because you also lose energy sending the current through the wires to the tires or through the gear system to the tires, somebody had the bright idea of saying, why don't I put four small motors, one on each tire? Oh, yeah, and boy, you probably need a much smaller gear mechanism. You just need a computer to control it all, but that we can do for cheap. So look for those down the pipe. Saw that about three years ago in a, in a prototype. Example four. A mass of 100 kilograms is pushed along the floor at a constant speed. Hey, Rob, what am I going to underline? Darn right. Of two meters per second. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.25, what's the power output? Well, power work over time. Work is what times what? Work is what times what? I think work is force times distance over time. Does this question mention a distance? No. Does this question mention a time? No. What does this question give us? Two things. What? Well, three things. A mass. What else? 
Ah, uh, you know what I hear, Jessica? I think I am going to do that. Work, sorry, power is also force times velocity. What velocity, Jessica? How big? Two. What force? Uh, <gasps> Here is my mass. What are the forces acting on it? The obvious ones. Mg down, absolutely. What else? Normal force. What else? Well, something must be pushing it forwards. I'll call that the applied force. What else? Now, what can you tell me about the length of my friction arrow? How long should it be exactly? Rob? Why? Constant speed means we're in bounce. So over here, what I should really write underneath the F is F applied times V, but I can't find F applied. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as F applied. What, Rob? And for some reason that R is all wonky on me, didn't it? Let's try that again. So if I hear you, power is going to be friction times V. Rob, friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. What? This is going to end up being mu mgv. How much power does it take to push 100 kilograms at a constant speed of 2 meters per second with friction of 0.25 coefficient? 0.25. Times 100, times 9.8, times 2. Uh, can you do this in my head? Maybe. Uh, 100 times 9.8 is 90. Half of. Uh, do you get 409? Yeah, 4, uh, 490, 4,900. 490? 490. every second using 490 joules, which is why it's 490 watts of power. Is that a lot? I was riding my exercise bike the other day and I noticed it had a setting for power in watts, so I clicked on it. After riding for about half an hour, I put on about 100 watts. 490, that's actually a fair bit of power. That's more than biking at a reasonably slow speed speed for a half hour. Example five. A girl pushes a three times ten to the second Newton box. Oh, Carissa, they didn't give me the mass. They gave me the weight of the box because it's in Newtons. Along the floor for a distance of 4 meters, the coefficient of, of kinetic friction is 0.33. She then lifts the box up 1.2 meters. What's the minimum amount of work that she has done? What's the minimum amount of work that she has done? Well, Change in potential plus change. I didn't go force times distance because we're changing direction. I don't think I want to go with that. I'm going with a scalar approach here. Over here, the change in potential. Carissa, what's change in anything? What's your initial potential energy? It's implied by this question. Where are we starting out? How high? On the ground because it says slide across the floor and then lift it up. So I think my initial is zero. My final is going to be MGH final. Is that okay, Carissa? Now, initially I'd written my change in kinetic energy here, but I ran into a roadblock because I said, did they give me a V? No. Where is this object getting its kinetic energy from? 
I think it's going to be the force person is pushing with times the distance. Is that okay, Alex? Which force, or first of all, which distance, what's the horizontal distance? This question says this mass was pushed. Alex. Okay, easy enough to find. Which force is, well, here's my mass. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious ones. Mg down. What else? Oh, oh, yes we do. What else? Absolutely normal force. What else, Jessica? Absolutely. And what's the last one? Friction. Now, I don't know how hard she's pushing, but Rob, the fact that it asked me for the minimum amount of work suggests how long should I draw my friction arrow? Not long. If it was longer, it ain't moving. Exactly the same. What we're, I guess she's exactly matching friction. She could be doing more. This is the minimum amount of work she's doing to get this ob keep this object moving. So I'm going to argue, Brendan, that this is really friction force times the distance. Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. And I don't know the force. Same size as the normal force. What? It's going to be mu mg times d. In fact, I think this equation over here is going to be mg h final. There's how much potential energy I gained. Plus mu mg d. There's how much kinetic energy I gained. Where did the energy come from? Me, or well, the girl. That's why this is how much work the girl had to do. Do I know the mass? No. In fact, what did they give me here? Not the mass. What did they give me here? The weight, which as an equation is what? What? Oh. So instead of finding the mass, what can I replace this mg with, Andrew? Caught you mid-stretch, my bad. Instead of finding the mass by taking this number and dividing by 9.8, you know what? This here is just mg. mg times h plus mu. 300, did I write 3,000? Thank you. What was that? Okay. Coming from you, how could it not? Anyways, here we go. Brandon, what's mu? Redeem yourself. What's mu? Redeem yourself. Brandon, redeem yourself again. What's mg? What can I replace mg with? That's the nice thing in this question. I didn't bother finding the mass. I, I was going to divide by 9.8, but Courtney, I glanced at my equation, and I noticed m was never by itself. It was always next to a g. If they gave me mg, why don't you replace them both at the same time? And what's uh, distance here, Courtney? Yep. What's the minimum amount of work that this girl is going to do? Shh. My recording is picking this up. Shh. Alex, what'd you get? Oh, not done yet? What's the minimum amount of work this girl did? Justin, what'd you get? 4240? Anyone else? Doesn't seem like that number doesn't ring a bell with me. 756? Seven five seven hundred fifty six. Just a little more than one horsepower. And this is work, joules. Okay. I like number six, but I'm going to skip it. Cause you guys are tired. It's a bit overkill. And I'm going to same thing. Say the same thing about number seven. And I'm going to say the same thing about number eight.
your homework. Number one, number two, number three, not number five, sorry. Look, nerd, look cool. So one, two, three. Nine. You can now do every question on the unit review as well.